Welcome to our fourth and last midweek Advent service uh, in our in the series of uh, from heaven above. Again, we'll start by singing a few verses of the hymn from heaven above to earth I come. Uh, we'll also sing part uh, verses from lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. We'll sing. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry, and the King shall come when morning dawns. Our readings for this evening include Isaiah 38, 17 to 20, Romans 6, verses 20 through 23, and John 1, 1 through 5. And that's where we get uh, our theme ver verse from Romans 6, 23. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, I'll, I'll be using the, the children's sermon again, so let, let's get that inner child out and uh, ready to, to ha have a little fun and play. We've had the acronym, acronyms over the last few weeks. We started with hope, that was having only positive expectations. And we had love, love others very eagerly. And we had peace, which was, hmm, let's see, that was just, that was a week ago, getting kind of busy. Peace, peace. Um, hmm. Pray expectantly about Christ everywhere. Well, ah, there you go. This week, our theme is life. And just look at this uh, Christmas present I got. Isn't it, isn't it beautiful? Beautiful pictures, nice box. There must be something really nice inside. Looking forward to that. Now, if I gave you this, a present, this present, and then ask you to give me $20, would, that, would it be a gift? No. If you have to pay for it, then it isn't a gift, is it? When someone gives you a gift, it's free. It doesn't cost a thing. That's what makes it a gift. No, uh, what was the greatest gift you ever got? Was it a, a video game system? Maybe a remote control car or truck? Or a teddy bear? What was the, a doll? What was the best Christmas gift you ever got? Bake, bake, uh, one of those little bake uh, ovens? Or a, or, a toy, or a sewing machine? A car? We might have lots of different ideas about the greatest gift, but today I want to tell you about what a gift is, without question, the greatest gift ever given. Romans 6, 23 describes it, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did you catch that? Instead of death, which is what we deserve because of sin, Jesus gives the free gift of eternal life. Life, then, is living in freedom evermore. The first letters of the words in this phrase spell the word life. Now when somebody gives you a gift, it's not polite to ask them, how much did this cost? <laughs> I hope your mom and dad have taught you that. But in the case of this gift, it's okay to ask God because he tells us. It cost God his only son, Jesus. Can you imagine how much Jesus loves us to be willing to die on the cross so that we have eternal life in heaven? Let's say that again. Life is living in freedom evermore. So let's live in the freedom of God's love and forgiveness every day. That's what I call living. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A theme verse, once again, from Romans 6, 23, the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
A verse in the prologue of John gives us this beautiful these beautiful words. For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. It should be clear to us by now in this Advent for Christmas sermon series that in Christ we receive many, many gifts. They are not the kind of gifts that we exchange, return, or discard because they don't last. It's grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. These gifts in Christ, and they last. <laughs> My, do they last. That's the way it is with the gift of life that Jesus gives. The Apostle Paul calls it eternal life. Life itself is a precious gift. Every living thing finds its life in the Spirit of God, who has breathed its life into it. That breath of life animates everything from an ant to a plant to a cow to a human being. It has been that way since the beginning of creation. God is not just a creator, but a life giver. Into a fallen world infected with sin, though, life is anything but eternal. With the onset of winter in many parts of the world, particularly last week in our part of the world, the reality of death is all around us. The life God breathes into every one of his creatures only lasts a short time. American poet Robert Frost put it this way, Nature's first grain is gold, her hardest hue to hold, but only so an hour, then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank in grief, so dawn goes down to day, nothing gold can stay. It is somehow fitting that Christmas should come at the start of bleak winter and its season of dying. Experiences tell us why Jesus came. As hard as a tree may strive to hold its leaves, death will have its way. As perseverant as an old dog may be to cling tenaciously to life, death will have its way. As hard as an old soul struggles to stay a while longer with friends and family, the breath of life received from God is exhaled one last time. Eden's grief becomes ours again. We sometimes forget that what Jesus was up against. It wasn't just sin, but the consequence of sin. The wages of sin is death. The good book tells us, old souls and young die because sin takes them there. And it wasn't just death Jesus faced, but the devil, who held the power of death over our lives. As Hebrews 2.14 puts it, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. Death was Jesus' ultimate enemy. So an eighth grader in Bible study asked the insightful question, but why did Jesus have to die? Why couldn't he just have gotten a really bad headache? The answer, Jesus had to die because the only way he could conquer death was to go headlong into it and come back to life again. So if someone asked Jesus why he had been sent by his father, if someone asked Jesus for his personal mission statement, this is what he would have said. This is what he did say. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So Mary's baby, God's own son, grew up to defeat death single-handedly, destined for a cross from the fault in Eden. He came, he died, he rose, and he conquered. The result? Eternal life for all who place their trust in him. As you open your gifts this Christmas, your heart will no doubt soar as you get just what you wanted, or just what you needed. If you can pause for a moment, though, and focus on the little one in the manger, 
even for just a few seconds, it will come to you. The greatest gift of all is the one he gives you, the gift of eternal life. Then with joy and gratitude, you can fill an old Hebrew phrase with enough meaning for eternity, Rachaim, to life, to eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Lachaim.